Strange Raphael and the Warrior Addict brand Warrior. In this short 20 minute video, we're going to look at how to unwind and release after a long day. Some days we don't need a really strong, challenging physical practice. Some days what we need is something softer, but also that allows opening and a sense of natural release of stress and tension in the body. So this sequence is great if you've had a really tough day, if you're feeling a little bit tired physically and mentally, and you need a way to kind of simmer the pot down and relax before bed or before moving on with your day. So we're going to spend most of this practice lying down. To start off with, come to lie down on the back. Lying down can be really helpful if you've been stressed or have a lot of hard work to do because there's this natural sense of feeling supported, feeling grounded, and feeling quite stable. So bringing the back of the body down, then you might rest the hands beside you, or maybe on the belly. Your legs could be long, or like me, you could bend your knees. And take a couple slow, clearing breaths. Imagine you could empty the tension as you breathe out. Completely releasing on the exhale. From here, as you breathe in, take the arms overhead and bend the elbows. If the hands don't rest comfortably down behind you and this feels uncomfortable, you can rest them on the chest like this instead. Either way, can you walk your feet to the outside edges of your mat? And as the feet walk out, they root. And now, keep your feet where they are, but allow your knees to fall over to the right. The knees are going to drift over and lower down. You might turn your head to look left. Breathing deeply here. And feel the breath not just in the belly or the chest, but all, also behind you, like you can breathe into the back and breathe into the side of the waist. This is a really helpful position because the spine is in a gentle twist. The hips are opening in different directions, and the shoulders can release. You could, if you'd like to find a deeper stretch, take your right ankle on top of your left knee, and then rest the foot down. Think of the inhale as filling up and clearing the lungs or any tension from the body Think of the exhale as releasing that, pouring outwards. And your next breath out, slowly release, come back to centre. Feet at the edges of the mat, and we'll take the knees the other way. Again, for some people, this is quite a gentle stretch. For some people, it can be really quite deep in the outside of the right hip, side of the waist. You might look over to the right, turn the neck. And seeing if you might become interested to the rise and fall of the breath. awareness to the sensations of breathing. As you focus on the breath and the feeling in the body, inviting the mind to let go of other things. But if it doesn't, don't worry. You might stack the left ankle on top of the right knee.
each time you breathe out, it's as though you're releasing something outwards, downwards. See if the shoulders and the neck could relax. breath out, releasing, coming back to centre. From here, draw the left knee into the chest, stretch the right leg long. The left ankle, a couple circles. Depending on what you do, you might be on your feet quite a lot today, so bring some movement into the ankles. Also, if you've spent a lot of the day sat down, maybe your ankles haven't moved so much, so this can also be helpful. It's amazing how releasing tension in the smaller areas of the body, like the hands and the feet and the neck, can help release tension elsewhere. Now, take your hands and link the fingers behind the left thigh. As you breathe in, lengthen the leg upwards, feel the stretch the back of the leg. And as you breathe out, bend. It's twice more inhaling and exhaling and again inhaling and exhaling. From here, bring the hands around the knee once more, draw the knee in. We'll take this into a twist. Release your left arm to the side and start to cross the bent leg over the body. Now pause in the twist. If your left arm and shoulder start to come up like this, bring the knee back a little bit, and backtrack, and then bring your left shoulder and arm down. Keep the shoulder rooting, even if that means the leg doesn't come across so much. Your left shoulder and arm anchor you as the knee moves away into the twist and pause as soon as you feel the shoulder lift. Eventually, as the body becomes more open, the leg may come across and the shoulder may still stay down. And breathing deeply here. See if you could relax the jaw, release the throat. Sometimes wiggling it helps. I know it's a strange one, but often when we can release things like the jaw, the tongue, or the throat, the muscles of the neck and the shoulders relax, and that in turn frees up the spine a little bit. Okay, slowly coming back round. We're going to take the right knee in and stretch the left leg long. Little ankle circles. And these small movements are also helpful because if you can bring awareness to the sensation, it's a little bit like a mindfulness practice. The idea that you could hone your awareness on a small subtle movements. Then you have to take the hands behind the thigh and the fingers. Lengthen the leg as you breathe in. As you breathe out, bare the knee. A couple more times. Gather the knee in, release the right arm, and begin to cross the leg over. Reroute your right shoulder down, and bring the knee across the body. 
you might look down on the right arm, taking a twist up into the cervical spine into the neck. If you notice the breath has got a little short, re-lengthen the breath. And allow that to nourish the body in a twist. The simple act of following the breath with your attention can have a really calming effect. Sometimes in sitting meditation, it's hard to follow the breath, it's too subtle, or the mind goes a bit crazy. But with a little bit of movement through a slower, softer kind of yoga practice, you might cultivate that same awareness. And coming back to center. So from here, we're going to take the knees into the chest and have a little rock side to side. A couple options here. So option one, bring both feet down, cross your right ankle over the left knee, and you might reach through and flex your right foot, keep the foot really active. So you might take this pose, sleeping pigeon. This is great for opening the hip in external rotation. As an alternative, bring the legs up and cross the right thigh on top of the left. And you create a little bit of space between the thighs and then cross the thighs over. From here, bend the knees. This is option two. You'll gather the knees in towards the chest. And here, the stretch is more on the outside of the hip rather than the inside. Eventually, you can walk the hands down the shins towards the ankles and gently draw the feet away from each other and down. So you might be breathing here or in the sleepy pigeon position. You can even rock a little bit if that feels good. All the while keep returning to the rise and the fall of the breath. How does deep breathing change the sensations of the pose? And when you're ready, slowly coming out, we'll take the other side. So again, either option one, crossing the ankle and reaching through, or perhaps you cross the left thigh on top of the right and draw the knees in, eventually holding the shins or maybe the ankles. A little rock side to side. If the jaw has become tense, give it a wiggle and release it. One more breath. And then slowly coming out. From here, place the feet down. And now bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to open, the hips to open into reclined cobbler's pose. You might rest the hands up the thigh. There's no pushing, it's just that very subtle weight of the hand, almost like an encouragement for the inner thigh to release and lengthen. And 
could you track the sensations in the hips and the legs as you breathe? Could the practice have a calming quality to the body, to the mind, to the heart? When we learn to release and to relax effectively, it actually really improves and optimizes the other areas of our life. If we're constantly gripping all the time, we don't have much left. We need to take a moment every so often to restore, to let go of physical and mental tension, to put that down. So that when we return to activity, we have more strength, more focus than before. Rest and release is then actually more efficient, more productive than a life that doesn't include them. Just another few breaths here. Here, use your hands to slowly help close the legs. And then take one arm overhead and roll to the side. Take a few breaths on the side of the body. a few breaths, slowly coming up. And we're actually going to finish in child's pose. So come to the hands and knees, knees about hip distance apart, touch your big toes together. To begin with, arch the back, gently breathe in, look forwards, lift the hips, and then as you breathe out, slowly sit back. Don't worry if you don't sit all the way down to the heels, you might be a little higher up. As you sit back, lower the elbows, eventually lowering the head down towards the floor and totally relaxing the arms. If that doesn't work for you, you could bring the forehead onto the fists and take a few breaths here. Notice the breath in the back of the body. Each exhale like you could release outwards. Child's pose is thought to have a calming effect on the mind. It's a gentle inversion where the head is a little lower. It's also the sense of drawing in slightly, stepping back, feeling a little bit cocooned almost. And then from here, when you're ready, slowly coming up. So if you have time, you might take Shavasana now. Although, if it's late in the evening and you still have things to do, it's helpful to finish in child's pose. It's easier to come out of than Shavasana, which might send you to sleep. Um, so feel free to take Shavasana, but use it wisely. 
this attention to the breathing through a slower, softer practice can really help to bring the mind into some peace and some clarity. It can take us out of kind of run of thoughts and the hamster wheel of the day. So I hope you found this beneficial and if in doubt and you're a little low on energy but you still want to practice, do something slow, something closer to the ground and breathe deeply and let that be your focus because that will bring you benefits in the rest of your practice. Thank you.